Hello, so happy you could join me again. It's a beautiful day here, and I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you're at. Pre going on here is a pre uh, canvas uh, 16 by 20. And what I did was I painted it green. But what I used was contact paper. And I cut out the middle and put it on the canvas. Then I spray painted it, peeled that off, We'll put this on, what was cut out from the original. Where I'm at right now is the canvas part right here. I covered it with a thin coat of liquid white. And that's what we need to use to prepare the canvas for this wet on wet technique that I use. And any information and the colors I'll be using will come across the screen right about here. So what I thought we'd do today is uh, Maybe put a tree on the outside to give it a three-dimensional look. So you could have the painting in the background and put this outside of the canvas. And you'll see as I go along and peel the contact paper off. So I already pre-primed it and we're ready to go. We're going to use a two-inch brush. We're going to get some sky color, maybe a Prussian blue. Start out with a darker color. In the corners right there I think is good dark dark color darker is always good and you can always blend it in oh who knows who knows who knows maybe maybe we'll make a lake I'm going to load it up on a 2 inch brush. It's going to be some of the mountain color I mixed already. It's a uh, phthalo blue, oppression blue, and a alizarin crimson. That gives you a, like a dark purple. So I'm going to find out where I want my water line to be. And that's exactly where it should be. You want to come in as straight as you can with your water lines. Otherwise, your water's going to look like it's going off your canvas, and we don't want that. And what I see in nature is right by the, the banks or any landscaping that you have, the water line is going to be real dark. It almost looks like a purple. So that's what I was doing right there, just making it a little darker. right across. You want to leave that open area through there and it gives it that reflection of water. And who knows, just go all the way down. We might fill this in with landscaping. Something like that. Now I'm going to leave that brush going. And I'm going to come in with a blender brush. And I'm going to blend in the sky. Maybe we'll get some clouds going. I'm going to start out in liquid white. It always helps. And then you go into the color. And it kind of blends it better. And just like in nature, the clouds and the sky is going to get lighter towards the horizon. And that's the same thing that happens here. We'll leave it darker on the top. And just by doing circular motions, you're going to end up making and creating all kinds of little things happening in the sky. Like little clouds and things that's going on. Just like that. Here and there and there and here. All the way down. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Leave some white areas in there. Kind of give you a nice, nice effect. Knocking the excess paint off. And we're going to come in and we're going to get some titanium white on the two inch brush. 
and some liquid white. We're going to make some clouds. Load it up. Maybe over here there's some right there. Load up some more color. Just tapping it. You want to get that edge. That edge on the cloud because that's where you get the, all that fluffiness and that uh, the look of almost like cotton on the clouds. I'm taking a blender brush and using just the corner of it. I'm going to blend some of the sky in. Here and there. Maybe we'll come in with some some darker color. Who knows? Just depends. And as the clouds get further in the distance, what they end up doing is they almost end up looking just like a line across. Next time you're out and you can look at nature in a different way. You can look at clouds a lot closer and the trees and just everything on what's going on. Okay, we're going to put some snow cap mountains in here. I got that mixture that I said earlier. Prussian blue, phthalo blue, glycerin crimson, and take a little roll of paint right across the edge there. And determine on where you want your mountain to be. Maybe it's up here in the clouds. Way up. Right there. Maybe it comes down. All we're worried about is that top edge. We want a sharp edge. I'm getting some more paint. We want some crevices and things happening. Different levels, different. Different things going on. Just the way you think a mountain should be, that's exactly how it should look. It's your world. Maybe that goes like that. Scraping that excess off. Hope you can hear that. And some more paint. Just here and there. And a little bit of everywhere. Maybe that comes down, who knows. Just like that. Put the palette knife off. Take a two inch brush, clean one. I'm going to pull down to get the lay of the mountain. How I want it to look. Get different things happening. You always want it to get lighter towards the base of it because most of the mountains, and they're further off in the distance, they're going to have that misty look. Almost like a fog or a haze because they're so far away. Blend it in. Pulling it down. Got all kinds of little things happening there. Knock the excess off of that one. Now we're to come into the palette knife and we're going to load up some titanium white. Got to get a little roll of paint on it for your snow on your snow cap mountains. Right across the edge. Oh, and let's say, um, let's say, I'm going to say the light's coming from this way, so it's, that's a bigger angle. All I'm going to do is tapping. And just letting the canvas take the color. Just pulls the paint off. If you ever run across, it's not sticking real well, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint every time. So you want to thin it out with some maybe some titanium white or liquid white. 
and that'll help it. You want to leave all those breaks in, because that's what really makes it. That's what really gets it to look like there's snow. Maybe there's snow right on that one. Add some more paint. Just tap it. Maybe that goes all the way over. Get a little roll of paint. I want to put some more snow on here. Get some edges happening over here. Just like that. Grab some more. Maybe where you want to highlight a little bit more. of breaks. Okay, we're going to load up some more and come up here. Just tapping it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this paint off up here. Come into some liquid white. Help it to stick better. Maybe that's going like that. Maybe that comes down just like that. Got that little lip coming up here. Who knows, maybe it goes just like that. Okay, now you can pull from some of this white here. You can use this corner of the palette knife. It's smaller, you can get into angles better. And just pull back from some of this. It gives you that reflection, sort of that shadow. That shadow look. Just like that. Maybe what I see though is I think on this edge right here it's sticking out enough where I think it can it can use a little bit more snow. Highlight it just a little bit more where the sun might be hitting it. A little bit more. Just like that. Now we're going to come in to our blender brush and we're going to Start tapping and go the lay of the, the mountain on the angles. And what we're doing is we're just making it misty. We're getting that misty look that I talked about earlier. And we're just misting it all over. Who knows? Just like that. down all the way down to the water line
Okay. What I see is happening. So we're going to put some distant trees in. I'm going to use some uh, liquid clear. It's going to thin, thin it out even more. Some of the mountain color. I'll add a little bit of a lighter hue to it. Hold it up just like that. I'm going to come in and pull up to make distant evergreen trees. Just like that. I'm going to try to stay out of the way. Just pulling up. Different angles. Different heights. Just trying to create that illusion. Of something happening back there. I'm going to try to leave a gap in between so you got your different layers going on. That little whiteness, that's good to have. And you don't want to fill it all in, you want to leave some spots. Because the trees grow all kinds of different ways. We're just trying to create an illusion of distant trees. Maybe there's one that come up pretty high here. They're too far. They're too far out there to really see the branches of an evergreen tree or your forest. It's just to give you the impression that stuff's all happening out there. Now we're going to take the blender brush. We're going to come in and pull up. Pull up on the trees. And then tap. You want to get that misty look just by the water. All the way across. kind of blends it all in. Just like in nature where you don't really see the, the bottoms. You don't really see the bottom of the trees and stuff like that. It's all misty. like that. Now we're going to take the fan brush with that color on there and I always like to make it darker right by the trees. Right by the bank here. Because that's the way I think that's what I see. When I'm out looking around and I look out by either water or ponds or creeks or whatever. I always look at nature differently. And I look towards the land and pick out different things and say, wow, that's, that's dark right there. That's almost like a purple. All I'm doing is tapping and going across. And I get a little bit of that edge there going. And I'm going to come in and take that blender brush again and just pull down. Just grab it, just pull down just a little bit and you get some reflections going on. But you're also making an impression there, distinct line. of the water, maybe where the trees are, and all kinds of things happening. Just like that, take the palette knife, a little roll of paint across the edge, and come in and tap. A 
what we're trying to do is make that a little bit darker right on the edge right along that And it brings it out more. Now what we'll do is we'll take some liquid white, a little roll of paint across the, the edge here, and we'll tap in some water lines. If you think in some areas you might have had too much too much water happening there if you just keep tapping it you can make it go away and that's the good thing right here I see a little bit of a Now I'm going to take that uh, palette knife again. I'm going to add a little bit more of white in some areas. Because what I think it looks in nature is you always have some areas you get the reflection. Using a blender brush I'm going to pull right down from where that white is. Some things happen, the reflections back there. Clean it off, go right across, real light. Step back and take a look and see if that's what you're looking for. Now, I use paper towels and I kind of use both. I use rags and paper towels and I'm also using odorless paint thinner, which is always a good thing to use. Cleaning that uh, fan brush off. I'm going into some green color. Dark green. Halo green. Sap green. I'm going to get a dark color to start putting some land in, I think. And some liquid clear. And determine on how we want this pond to be how much land we want. Maybe maybe we could have something happening back here. I'm just tapping. Bringing that edge out. Bringing that line. Making it darker because we're going to highlight it. We're going to highlight it with some yellows. Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's off in the distance there. Maybe some land comes this way. It does now. <laughs> well, it's your world, and you can put whatever you want, however you want things to be. That's exactly how they should be. Just fill them more with the dark colors. Just tapping this in. Now 
maybe that comes just down here like this. It's all part of the land. Just tapping it in. Filling it in. Go to the other side. We started on this big mountain. Maybe this is just a peninsula that's coming out. Maybe it just comes out like that. Right to the edge. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to get into some watercolor and the palette knife. And I'm going to come in here and tap some edge. Where I want the water, the water's edge to be. And what that's going to do is it's going to separate that. And it's going to give us an area to work with. Give us that sh shading, the shading look of that darkness that I said you always see right at the base. Maybe here it's more. I'm putting more here because of the hill being up. Okay, we're going to take some of this color here, the green, with the liquid clear. I'm going to go into some evergreen trees. I'm going to make some trees. Same colors, except I'm using a little bit of mountain color to give it a blue look, loading it right up like that. Maybe in our world there's a tree that goes right off the canvas here. Just tapping down, then I'm taking the angle to the side of the brush and just tapping and going back and forth. If you find it's not sticking, just add a little bit more liquid clear to thin it out. Just go back and forth all the way down. Gapping. Just like that. Load it up. Maybe there's, maybe there's one back here that you can't see a whole lot of. They use different shades, different colors, just like that. Got a couple of things going on over there. Maybe here I'm going to put a big tree, but it's going to be outside of the painting. So back here, we'll just touch this up a little bit, straighten that up, straighten that line up, maybe, maybe, we'll put another one right there, just like that. I always start from the top, I always go down some. Because I just think in nature that the trees, they're not all perfect. And you always see that. They have some stuff missing from the top. And okay, we got that happening. I'm going to add some more darker color over here with this land. Get the lay of the land going.
automatically gives you a shadowy look. And that's kind of what you're looking for, different layers. I'm going to go over on the other side of the pond and create some over there. Because it might be darker over there because of the sun. It's not getting on that big hill. That big hill is blocking it. Just like that. All the way down. I'm just tapping along that one edge where we got that color. So that's kind of like blended it in a little bit. It's making it part of the land. That's a good thing. That's what we want. Maybe that goes up. Maybe that's part of the land. Maybe that's part of the dirt and stuff happening. Okay, we got that going on. Gonna take the blender brush. And I'm gonna pull down from here to get our reflections. Pull it down more where the trees are at because that's the way it looks in nature. Then over here we're not going to do so much just because that's closer and maybe that's deeper. It's a deeper area right there. Just here and there. Take the palette knife, load up some of that dark color. Because like I said, I want to get it darker in here. I'm going to come in and highlight this even more. So I got more to pull from with the blender brush. Just grab it and pull it down. that watery look to it. Now palette knife again and some white to get the water lines going. And just tap it. Here and there you give it that rough look. Like there's waves coming in. Who knows, maybe there's some water line coming out there. You got that happening. Okay. Now what we can do is take that palette knife. I'm going to scrape in some twigs and branches back here. I know you probably can't see that at home or wherever you're viewing this from, but if you was to do this, you could see and tell how easy it is. And I just use that. I'd have to use the paintbrush. Neat little thing. Okay, I'm going to take that two inch brush I had loaded up with all that white. I'm going to start putting some highlights in. So what I want to do is I want to get some Titanium white, cadmium yellow, load that up, liquid clear, gonna load up some more, I'm gonna fill up some more liquid, liquid clear, need it real thin, cause we got a lot of paint on there, loading it on both sides. Just like that. I want to come in and find out just tapping. Maybe some more liquid white. Get a little bit brighter, a little bit thinner. Just like that. That's 
seem to work. Different things happening back there. Just keep tapping and you kind of can blend it out. But you want that sharpness on some of them because that's going to be the, where the light is hitting. And you just tap it. And maybe right here right there. Maybe that popped right there. Maybe right here. Kind of here and there. Maybe on the other side. Over here. Just like that. right on this edge coming down. Pay attention to the lay of the land because that's going to give you those angles and those hills and you're going to leave gaps in between because it makes it look hilly. Putting some more on this one here. Maybe this one here I'm going to leave dark right down here but I'm going to highlight this one right in the front. Just because when you get closer gets darker. And some more highlight here and there. Just getting all that stuff happening. All I'm doing is tapping. Trying to get the different layers. Different layers of grassy area. Before I say I need the lighter, lighter colors, I'll go ahead and add it. Maybe it goes right back like this. Maybe all this gets blended in some. The way I see it. Just like that. Maybe that comes right out. That gets blended. Just like that. Got some things happening over here. Looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to take a uh, fan brush and I see that this right in here I'm going to pull down get that more of a watery look like close to shore you'll see it is darker like where the little fish are swimming or things are happening just pulling it down Could be shallower water there too. It's whatever you think. Goes right down. Maybe that goes right off the canvas right there. And you want to come in and pull down. Seems like when you pull down it always gives it that water effect. When you go across it gives it that misty, that watery edge. I'm going to take a little bit of white. So I'm going to put a little bit of water lines in here. here and there. Just like that. 
goes right out in there. Got that all happening now. Now we're going to pull this off and we're going to do that big tree in front. Here's the moment of truth. Just like that. Now, we're going to put some land in here, big tree. I'm going into the darker colors that I used on the other trees, but a little bit darker. And a lot of liquid clear. Okay. Big decision here. We're going to put the tree right above here. All the way down. Out of the canvas, into the canvas. All the way down. Loading it up on the fan brush. And going to take the corner. I'm going to touch this up a little bit more. Take the corner and just start tapping back and forth. Just back and forth just like that. See how it's going down? You're getting those angles. You'll, you'll know when to load up the brush again because you'll feel it. You'll see it. It starts thinning out. Here and there, there and here. All the way down, just like that. Get some going over here. Some darker color. Have to thin it out because there's a lot of paint here, so. Maybe this comes right down. Got some things happening right, right in front. Get some more paint. Fill in some areas. Could have some that's opened up too. Or you can see the stuff behind it and that's okay. And that looks good. Now we're going to come in with a darker color and we're going to put some land in here. Where we want the land to be. Maybe it's right there. Maybe it goes up behind there. Just like that. I'm doing is tapping, tapping and filling it in. Get some land going on. Maybe just like that. Now we'll come in with a lighter color like we used with all that titanium white, liquid white, and cadmium yellow. Load it up. Maybe there's some highlights right there. Maybe it's really zinging right there. We're making those gaps in between to get the lay of the land. Maybe it goes back here. Lighter. Lighter underneath the tree. Or darker. However you want to look at it. <laughs> and more color.
any other land and that really, that's really important because it really makes it really makes the painting you get all these all these things happening all this all this illusion that's going on Tapping it, getting some more yellow, more of a yellow look. Got that stuff going on. What I see is darker color underneath in here. off. Even though we covered up some of the land, we know it's back there and you can see some of it through there. I'll tell you what, maybe in our world, this one's got two trees in it. Since we got a little space here, <laughs> maybe there's one right here too. There is now, all the way down. Take the corner of the brush, go down from the top a little bit. Filling it in just like we did that other one. Just like we made the other tree. Back and forth all the way down to the land. Maybe that goes over. Some gaps in there like I said that always makes it look more real if you look in nature you'll see that the trees have gaps in them they're not all filled in fully just like that looks pretty good here and there make a little darker at the base we got all that happening and we're going to call this a finished painting I'm using some liquid clear maybe maybe some of that light color the yellow whatever color you you like whatever goes with the painting that's what I always do I always sign it in the corner. Some people like to put their last name. Some people use their initials. I use my last name. And you always want to remember. You always want to remember to put the year in because that's always a good thing. People ever ask you, 
and then you can always look back. See your progress. Just like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this painting. This one's a little different. With the oval, I've done one with the oval before. Uh, I think oval is a different 3D look that uh, you might not see too often. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back and see me. Have a nice day. Goodbye.